Welcome back everyone, Mike McConville here for String Tech Workstations, Stratford, Ontario, Canada. It is a beautiful Saturday afternoon. The humidity is finally lifted. Darcy's back in the booth. Things are rocking. Oh, here's how you make a hundred dollar guitar sound like a million bucks. Okay, so I've scraped away at that saddle and lowered the action. It's set up for 11 to 52 strings at concert pitch. This is where the compensated nut ended up on this one. Let me play a couple of chords and let you hear it. So this entire job, the fret dress, the compensated saddle, the compensated nut, it was all done on the XLT. So the other guitar that we got on the bench here is it's a Yamaha guitar that the guy got. Man, it's in like mint condition. I think it sat in a closet for 30 years. Uh, the action needed to be lowered, frets needed to be dressed. I will be doing a compensated nut, of course. But I wanted to bring you in to show you why I'm rerouting this bridge. Because if you look, you see how shallow that slot is. It will not be deep enough to support a saddle once I lower the action. Because I am going to need to shave this bridge down a little bit. So I've set up the bridge slotting jig. So what you see here is an acrylic plate that's an identical match to the Bosch Colt router plate. So long before I flick the switch on the router, I figure out the sort of trajectory. I've got my little clips here to stop the router at the right spot on both sides. So we're going to go ahead and deepen that slot and that will allow us to shave the bridge down a little bit, drop the action, and continue with the rest of this job. So we're all set up to make this cut. Let me bring you in for a closer look. So the reason I use a Bosch Colt router for this job is because the typical Dremel tool is one-eighth of a horsepower. The Bosch Colt is a horsepower. And I've got a brand new bit on there, and here we go. bit deeper than that and move this just a little bit further. So this gives us a saddle slot depth of so the rosewood floor that remains to support the saddle is a little less than 330 seconds. I aim for 330 seconds. It's slightly less than that because this bridge is quite thin and we're going to need to shave it down a little bit to bring the action down to where it will play perfectly. Happy with that? Let me take this jig apart. I'll bring you in and show you how it works. So this is held in place finger tightened only. And that's all you need because underneath here we've got a hockey puck. Surprise, surprise. Same thing on the other side. It's just finger tightened. No, no dangerous clamping pressure here. And it just pulls off like so. So the pressure from the aluminum plate is deflected by the hockey puck to the edge of the guitar where the sides meet the top and you have that curving underneath. So nice and solid, got a perfect cut there. Now we'll get on with the rest of the job. So this is one of the fret guards that I send out in your kit. So I start by making an impression of the bridge shape into the fret guard and we'll just cut out that shape. And that'll give us enough protection for the top as we as we shave that bridge down. So I start with my Dyna braid, 80 grit, and 
I always favor the back of the bridge because I like to see it ramp from the back towards the leading edge. So I'm taking it off the back edge. Okay, now I'm not touching the wings at all. It's only the central portion of the bridge that I'm sanding. In a perfect world, that straight edge would actually just kiss the top of the bridge. But because this bridge is so thin, I'm a little leery to go too much thinner than this. So I've taken that down, taken the 80 grit marks out with 320 grit sandpaper sort of scrubbing along the grain. For the final grit I've got some 600 on the dyno grid. And that should pretty well do it. That's going to give us enough depth in the slot to support a saddle and the bridge is lowered enough to be able to drop the action down where we need it. Done deal. Liking that. Of course, you would never do this job on a Martin or a Gibson or a really expensive guitar. You would pull the neck off, reset the neck. Okay, I'm just finishing up the fret level before I recrown, and I want to just kind of sweep along the fingerboard to show you there were a bunch of different spots along the length of the fingerboard. This is how I sort of check the fingerboard in thirds. So what I have here is I've got a one thou feeler gauge. I'm checking the center and checking the outside and the base side. Now this is this took the biggest hit right in here. Go check that for level. So this 8 inch straight edge allows me to check the neck kind of in, in thirds. Sort of the middle third of the neck, the top end of the neck, and the bottom end of the neck. So once again I'm going all the way across the middle of the neck, the base side, the treble side, and then lastly the top end of the neck. So what that tells us is the neck along the trajectory of the string path is laser straight. There were multiple spots along the length of the neck that needed to be sort of nicked to get this level of accuracy. And a few of those spots took a really good hit, like these are squared right off. So I've got to go over recrown, and then we'll polish them out and move to the next stage. As always, the 320 will take out those tooling marks in the file. Now for those of you who are ordering your fretting kits, just let me know if you want any more of these uh, fret guards so that we can include them for the one shipping charge. Okay, that's our 600. There's our emery cloth. Yeah, our action height is very presentable now. So across these peg holes here, I'll make relief cuts to make sure that the string is resting firmly on the focal point of the saddle all the way across. So we'll do that first before we do anything more on the saddle. 
So I've got those original pins. I'm going to get the proper reamer to ream those holes out because of course the pins are going to sit too high right now because we've thinned out the bridge. So with the reamers you want to go just a couple of strokes at a time. Don't get too rambunctious with it. These reamers I got from uh, George Heinel in Toronto, the violin guy. And he's been supplying, you know, Canadian guys with uh, reamers and luthiers knives and nuts and saddles and cases and bridges and all kinds of things. Good people. You can give Andreas a call. He'll take care of you. They supplied me with all the classroom file nuts and saddles and files when I was teaching the college courses for uh, a good 10 years anyway. I think we're good with that. Yeah, it's good. Well, this is where we ended up with this Yamaha guitar. So the E, A, D, and G strings all had to go beyond the confines of the original bridge slot in order to intonate. These two strings are the only two strings that were actually possible to intonate with the stock saddle. So at this end, this is where we ended up with the compensated nut for the 11 to 52 strings at concert pitch. So for the first time since this guitar was made all those years ago, it is perfectly in tune. I'll bring it in the studio and let you have a listen. This is exactly why I leave these blanks so long, so they're long enough to actually create a cantilevered saddle. So there's our compensated saddle. There's our compensated nut. For those of you who watch my channel, you know that most of the guitars I do tend to be kind of high-end guitars, Gibsons, Martins, Fenders, etc., etc. Every once in a while I'll get a guitar that it might not have a lot of monetary value, but it has a lot of sentimental value. And this is one of those cases where, no, it's not an expensive guitar, but it's a guitar he's had for a long time. It's been the family for a long time. And we went the distance on this one. So even though you're not going to get a spectacular sound out of this, like a $3,000 guitar, there's no reason in the world why it can't be perfectly in tune and play smooth as silk. And that's what we accomplished here. So this guitar has never been in tune since the day it was made. You can see the amount of displacement in the bridge. I had to go way beyond the confines of the original slot to get this guitar to intonate. But the point is, Jim doesn't have to struggle with this anymore. So we do a round robin of chords, there's our D chord. Pick up your own guitar and play these chords. My fingernails got kind of chipped on the sander there today, so it's a little ragged. A. Jim's mum was a, a concert pianist, from what I understand, and uh, uh, you know he doesn't profess to be a, 
Mr. Guitar or anything, but the guy's definitely got ears. He can hear if it's in tune or not. So there you go, that's an FG 180 from God knows how many years ago, 30, 35?